Um, how did Jesus feed 5,000 people? A story that I'm sure we all know and probably even heard a million times, but um, it is, uh, but uh, but we before we actually get into it, uh, because that that this particular story is in all four gospels, okay, um, and so we're gonna we're gonna kind of look at that more than just looking at the story in John. We're just going to do a little comparison, and I think it'll help to understand um, the 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 Bible uh, the way that we the way that we study it and. And it's actually, it, it, it's actually from the original Christianity, which was, which was uh, Eastern Christianity. Okay, so the Bible is a library of books with stories by many different authors. Okay, the now the Bible was not written by God. Now this flies in the face of many. Um, denominations, um, particularly evangelicals, because their doctrine says that the Bible is the inerrant word of God. All right. And of course, that causes many problems, uh, particularly, particularly when you, uh, when you're reading uh, the Old Testament, um, things like, um, well, there, there, there's a psalm that talks about um, beating babies' heads against the wall, and and um, you know, and if you know nothing about the Bible, it it, it turns it turns many people off. That's just one part of it, and uh, because you just you you can't follow everything that's in the Bible. It wasn't meant to be that way. So the other thing we need to know is that the Bible was written to and for the ancient Semitic people. And what that means is that we can't apply our culture to the Bible. We can learn from it. And we can learn many things because because the 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 people, um, uh, their culture, their customs and stuff were different, but we're all one people under one God. So, um, so but it's important to know that, and that's where that's where um, that's where we come in when we teach, and why it's so important to teach. The culture and and the ancient background. So, okay, another thing to understand. Okay, the Bible narrative. Okay, stories. Um, it's in the ancient Near Eastern style of writing, which contains symbolism, idioms, amplification, and more. And so, in order to understand the meaning of the Bible, you must be familiar with these things and also the culture of the time. Uh, and it's, the Bible is a piece of literature. Uh, we, we, you know, we, it's known as the Holy Bible, yes, but it is, it is a piece of literature. And in light of all that, then many passages in the Bible cannot be taken literally. And this is where uh, this is where there are many uh, many breakdowns in interpretation, um, and many of the what what we know to be mistranslations, what we know to be uh, idioms or a symbolism, which changes the meaning 
but but others do not. Traditional Christianity has been based on many of these passages passages <coughs> that have been taken literally. And so uh, so and we'll see, you know, we'll see some of that tonight. But you see this, you see it throughout the Bible. And um, so we're going to go to our stories. And let's see here. All right. The other thing I just wanted to, because we're because we have passed the story, it's really in all four gospels. But I have, um, I just have put down here the book of Matthew, the book of Luke, book of John, to just to to have an understanding because you're going to see that each of these stories, though it's the same, um, the 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 same story more than likely the same place and whatnot, but they are slightly different. And the reason is because each each of the stories was written by a different author. And so and and many at many at a different time. And so basically the, the book of Matthew, okay, the book of Matthew was written by the apostle when I say written, um, more more than well, more than likely, okay, they were. It was kind of like they transcribed or told the scribes, and the scribes wrote it. The scribes would add to it as they as they went along, you know, and understood it or thought they understood it. And so, but Matthew is a firsthand account though it was written they say originally in about 40 to 45 AD and that's after the crucifixion okay so again um when they when 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 they write okay they're recalling from memory okay they didn't have tape recorders remember so these are all based from their memories okay luke all right, Luke is not a firsthand account. Okay, Luke came later, but Luke compiled his gospel is just based on on other information uh, from people at the time and possibly talking to some people and whatnot. But Luke was not was not there with Jesus. He did not personally know Jesus or study under Jesus. And uh, he's known, he's known in, in the the Greek, the Greek, uh, the Greek, um, um, uh, it, uh, interpretation. He's known as a physician and whatnot, but he really wasn't a physician like we know a doctor or whatever um he was a healer of sorts and he accompanied paul sometimes but anyway so and that was about 75 to 95 ad and so but it's com it's compiled he wasn't really there and then we have john that we're studying now uh john was the beloved disciple of jesus and there's a lot of controversy as over when he actually uh, uh wrote this and whatnot uh, most people believe it was later, like 85 um, AD. And so I just wanted to put this in here so that you could have an idea of these stories, why, why they might be a little different. And uh, not, not, that, not that the meaning essentially changes, but just so it's just information so you know about the Bible. Okay. Now, so what we're going to do um we're going to there's um one two three there's actually four passages of scripture now what we're going to do we're just we're just going to read them and then and i'll talk a little bit about the differences only just just for informational purposes and then we'll talk about the real meaning 
So, my friend George, would you like to read yes. this? Okay. Okay. And Jesus went out and saw large crowds, and he had pity for them and healed their sick. When it was evening, his disciples came to him and said, This is a lonely place, and it is getting late. Dismiss the people so that the men may go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But he said to them, It is not necessary for them to go. Give them something to eat. They said to him, We have nothing here except five loaves of bread and two fish. And Jesus said to them, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the people to sit down on the ground. And he took the five loaves of bread, two fish, and he looked up to heaven and blessed them. And he broke them and gave them to his disciples. And the disciples placed them before the people. So they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up the fragments which were left over, 12 full baskets. And the men who ate were 5,000, not counting women and children. All right. I'll read the next one, and then, and then you can read them. Okay. Yeah. Now, this one, we go to Matthew 15. So there's two accounts in Matthew. And Jesus departed from thence, and he came toward the Sea of Galilee. And he went up to a mountain and sat down there. And a great many people came to him who had with them the lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and others. And they laid them down at the feet of Jesus, and he healed them. So that the people wondered to see the dumb speaking and the maimed healed, and the lame walking and the blind seeing. And they praised the God of Israel. Jesus then called his disciples and said to them, I have compassion on this people, for they have remained with me three days. All right, now we already see that there was no mention of time or whatnot in the first passage, but here they say, oh, they had been there for three days and they have nothing to eat. And if I dismiss them fasting, they might faint on the way. But this I do not wish to do. Okay. His disciples said to him, where can we get bread in this desolate place to feed all these people? Jesus said to them, how many loaves of bread have you? They said to him, seven loaves and a few small fish. So he ordered the people to sit on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves of bread and the fish and gave thanks. And he broke them and gave to his disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. And all of them did eat and were satisfied. And they took up of the fragments that were left over seven full baskets. And those who did eat were 4,000 men besides women and children. Okay, so you have two different versions from Matthew. Okay, okay, George, uh, let's do Luke. Okay. When the people found it out, they went after him, and he received them and spoke to them concerning the kingdom of God, and he healed those who were in need of healing. And when the day began to wane, his disciples came up and said to him, Dismiss the people that they may go to the villages around us and to the farms to lodge there and find food for themselves because we are in a lonely place. Jesus said to them, you give them to eat. But they said, we do not have more than five loaves of bread and two fish unless we go and buy food for all the people. For there were, there were about 5,000 men Jesus said to them, make them sit down in groups, 50 men in each group. The disciples did so, making them all sit down. And Jesus took five loaves of bread and the two fish, and he looked up to heaven and blessed them and broke and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And they all ate and were filled. And they took up fragments of what was left over, 12 baskets. Okay, not a whole lot of difference. 
but but they made them sit it down in groups of 50 men. Why? Who knows? Anyway. Okay, so now we go to John. So Jesus went up to the mountain and he, he sat there with his disciples. And the feast of the Passover of the Jews was at hand. Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a large crowd coming to him. Okay. And he said to Philip, one of the disciples, where can we buy bread that all these may eat? Notice John is saying that Jesus said this. Where can we buy bread? Um, difference. He said this merely. <clears throat> he said this merely to test him, meaning Philip, for he knew what he would do, and that's Jesus. For Jesus knew what he would do. Philip said to him, two hundred pennies worth of bread would not be sufficient for them, even if each one should take a little." One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, there is a, a boy here who has with him five barley loaves and two fish. But what are these for all of them? Jesus said to them, make all the men sit down. There was much grass in that place, so the men sat down, 5,000 in number. And Jesus took the bread and blessed it and distributed it to those who were sitting, likewise the fish also, as much as they wanted. When they were filled, he said to the disciples, gather up the broken pieces which are left over so that nothing is lost. They gathered him up, filled 12 baskets with broken pieces which were left over by those who ate from five barley loaves. Now, this is this is the sentence. Then the men who saw the miracle which Jesus performed said, truly this is the prophet who has come into the world. Okay, now remember, we're studying John, and John's purpose, John's purpose in writing all this is to is to show that Jesus was the Messiah. And and John, it's the book of John where these miracles come in. And you notice it didn't say anything about a miracle in the other versions. So, all right. Now, um, there, there's, there's a couple other things you'll notice. All right. First of all, you're talking about 5,000 people, 4,000 people. All right, now, this is called amplification. It is found in the Bible a good many places. And so I just put a basic definition of amplification. And this one I thought was pretty good. The action of enlarging upon or adding detail to a story or statement. All right. And essentially what we see in a Bible here is exaggeration used to make an impression. Okay, now in our world today, if people, if reporters or journalists reported that there were 5,000 people when there were only 1,000, of course, I think they do do that some, uh, but um, th we would not be happy with that. And we would criticize that because uh, because that was deceiving the public. But the writers, um, uh, and even today, people who write in the Eastern format and style use amplification. So, so when they're referring to 5,000 people, 4,000 people, okay, um, number one, there was there, there's a difference in the stories, but it's not the numbers themselves. It doesn't matter whether it was five, four, whatever. But what you have to realize is that there weren't 5,000 people, okay? Uh, back in those days, uh, I doubt that there were many 5,000 in Jesus' day. 
I doubt that there were many 5,000 gatherings. Now, who knows how many? Well, the Eastern people don't care, and it really do, and it really doesn't matter, and that's how they write. So that's called amplification. More than likely, I mean, he did have good crowds of people, okay? But when they say large crowds, it was probably 300, 200, whatever, or, or even maybe not that. But it makes a good story, right? I mean, so, and accuracy and preciseness are just not important. So, I, I mean, the story, it's not to take away uh, from the meaning of the story and whatnot, but that's how they, that's how they do it. And uh, they certainly do get people's attention, right? But it's not to deceive. All right. And then, and then if you noticed when you were listening, okay, biblical numbers. All right. Nobody knows how many, e even, okay, even the guys, Matthew was there, John was there. It, it, you know, not, nobody knew and probably didn't even count uh, the, the, the loaves and the fishes, but the number seven, it's a biblical number. You find it throughout all the stories in the Bible. Um, and so when, when, when they're writing their stories, they didn't know. And, and did it really make any difference? It was a low number, not enough to feed all of the people that were there. And the same goes with the number 12. Okay. Biblical number. There were 12 disciples and so on. So we just need to recognize that in these um in these stories and and throughout the Bible. You'll see seven, well, um, it's just just the way um that they that they wrote and they used biblical numbers. Now, all right, so we've we've we know the stories. Um we we've we, we've read them. We noted some differences. And so, but let's let's take a look at a cultural perspective here. All right. Now, traditional Christian doctrine has Jesus miraculously multiplying the loaves and fishes because he blessed the bread and the fishes. And then that that's that's when they were multiplying i mean i mean this is this is the traditional christian doctor okay and so now but from the cultural perspective of the ancient near east and jesus teachings this miracle takes on a different meaning so let's look at this okay now let's look at bread first of all Bread was the staple of life. Uh, women baked it every day, and they blessed the bread as they made it. They bless they they blessed the the flour. They they blessed the leaven. And bread was sacred. Okay, and it. They never wasted it or threw it away. Now, would they throw it to the birds? Yes, but that's how sacred it was. And uh, in many, in many places, even through the the, the centuries, uh, people would not even cut bread. Okay, they would pull it apart, but they would not cut it. Anyway, okay. Now, so there's another. There's another. Um, secret here to this miracle all right you see how this how how they they made bread okay um these i these the bread the common people's bread um was round as you see uh very round enough that I'm told could feed 
I, I, they say 40 people, but but you can see, let, let's not argue about numbers, but you can see it's very large, okay? And so what's going on here is that's what it looks like initially, all right? And then the bread is folded up. And in this case, it's folded up small enough that this went into the pocket. This is Dr. Erico, by the way, a very young Dr. Erico uh, in, in Israel. So, so the other piece to this is, okay, when men traveled, they had to carry sufficient bread with them, okay? No hotels, no, uh, no, um, <laughs> no McDonald's or no grocery stores, okay? Uh, they had to carry sufficient bread. And remember, they walked everywhere they went. Uh, these were these these were not wealthy people. Wealthy people might have had a couple donkeys, and real wealthy had horses, but no, and that's what they did. So their supply had to last for the entire journey, to and from. Okay, then on a short on a short journey, travelers would carry as many as fifteen loaves. Now, when they say between garments, remember. Well, both the men and women wore several layers, but we'll just we'll take the men now. The men uh, wore several layers of clothing, and one of those layers of clothing uh, would contain their supply of bread and fishes, maybe cheese, some other some other food, um, because that's what they would eat uh, when they're when they, when they were traveling, and so. As a result, okay, while a caravan is on the road, then, or while they were walking, you know, every man, everybody tried to conserve the supply of bread. And, of course, they were reluctant to share because, because they, you know, they estimated what they would need, da, da, da. And that's the way people are, okay? So, the men... And so, so what happened here? All right. Now, the traditional Christian doctrine says Jesus blessed the bread and it multiplied. And we have another miracle, okay? Like Jesus uh, uh, seemingly, the, like the miracle at the wedding in Canaan wasn't that Jesus turned water into wine. It was that Jesus was able to calm the party down, calm people down, and it wasn't that. So, um, so here we are again, and we're we're kind of questioning Jesus. But what happened, and is that the men who had, you know, previously said they did not have enough, okay, which 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 was everybody, because I'm sure. And one of the stories, it says that they were there for three days. So, you know, they were all starting to kind of worry because they still had to have bread to come home. So that was the state of affairs. OK. And so what what really happened is, yes, Jesus blessed the bread um, and whatnot. But uh, think about this. Don't we always ask? Not always, but I mean, I mean, not all people, but we ask a blessing before meals, uh, before we eat. And that was the custom there. You would always pray before you eat. So Jesus did that, but it was a normal thing. So the men who had previously said they did not have enough <laughs> suddenly displayed many loaves produced from their garments and bags. Now, and, and this is the reason, okay, these all, uh, this miracle of the wedding at Cana, whatever, it looks like magic, okay? Um, 
And 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 it was a miracle to to the hungry, but it happened because Jesus, remember, remember, um, Jesus. In one one place it says three days. Uh, one in mean, one place it said, "Oh well, he did this while they were coming," but it doesn't matter. They had all been listening to Jesus, one place or another, hearing his teachings and listening. Now Jesus was a very dynamic, charismatic speaker, um, and if. You had been listening to Jesus all that time, but there would have been no question that they would have shared their food. And Jesus knew, knew that the people would do this, okay? And when he said, and the disciples kept saying, well, how we were, where, you know, where is this going to come from? You know, we, we got to go, we got to go buy it. Well, he was <clears throat> he was teaching and demonstrating all the time everything that he did, even when he was on the cross. He was teaching and, and demonstrating his teachings. And so he knew he knew that the people had food, and he knew that after hearing his teachings, they would be they would be inspired and share. And so we don't want to take away from the fact that that Jesus as a holy man uh could have maybe produced all of that uh, that's but this is more in line with the Jesus well it's been more in line with the Jesus that we teach Okay, and so, and so, what was he teaching the disciples? What did the disciples learn? Okay, they learned to have faith, and they learned that God does provide. I don't know that they were aware, and we don't know that they were aware at that time that the people, you know, contributed their food. Uh, we, you know, nobody knows all the details. But in line with what Jesus was trying to accomplish in his teachings, the disciples learned a little bit about faith, and they learned that God does provide, even in impossible circumstances, which is what which which is what they thought. So now. So the miracle was that the people shared their food. Now, I, 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 I'm, this is just in all my words because every time I read this and then I read more about it and whatnot, but it was not, it wasn't an abracadabra action. And we, we have come to, well, let, let me read this next thing, and then I got all right. In accordance with his kingdom message, Jesus reached out to the hearts and souls of the people, making making them understand that we are all brothers and sisters with one loving parent, God, and we should love each other. So I'm just trying to Jesus taught all of this and he had taught all of this to those people okay and they shared now the why okay i i i, I bring this up because all right we get comments dr lamsa and dr eric uh got a lot of criticism for teaching these miracles this way and or which says that they really weren't the miracles that people think. Well, and and that just that that just brings up we talked about one time here about two different views of Jesus, but um and I just did a little comparison here 
and I'm going to, I will be adding to it, but the, the reason, the reason that, um, that there is so much controversy and whatnot is because the Christian doctrine is, is because of what the Christian doctrine is based on. Okay. So just a little bit about that. Okay. Christian doctors, it, it's based on the science. I mean, the signs and the miracles that, and, and, and that Jesus worked. Okay. And then, and then they, they really, really did not focus on Jesus teachings and the gospels. Okay. Um, they have put Jesus on a pedestal to praise and to worship, and Jesus will come back and fix things. Okay, that's that's the that that's just kind of a little bit of a summary of the Christian doctrine. But Jesus did not Jesus didn't teach that, and Jesus did not want praise or worship. Or recognition. Now, John, of course, is 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 writing, and so that so that Jesus, uh, what Jesus is saying, um, and that makes him the Messiah. But in the Synoptic Gospels, Jesus Jesus never wanted recognition, praise, or worship. He wanted action from the people. The whole, the, the gospel message, if you read, you go and read the, the gospel message from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, okay, it's, it's, it's all about people, the hearts and minds of people, and it's people uh, following the teachings of Jesus that's going to bring the peace and harmony to the world. Um, so. So that's that's just one of the main difference because because according to Jesus, love, peace, and harmony, what we all want, it's going to come from the hearts of men acting upon the teachings of Jesus. Okay. And then another another big one, I'm gonna add to this too, but okay. But the other you know, the, the other difference that gets that really um changes what Jesus taught is that Christian doctrine, they're talking about sacrifice. Jesus died for our sins and we have to be we have to be sorry and repentant and and thankful because Jesus died for our sins and it brings in, you know, we we need to suffer. And that of course that is a Jewish um Well, it was a Jewish, um, let's say Jewish origin, okay? Sacrifice was at the heart of the Jewish religion in the Old Testament. So, but we look at Jesus, and I, I didn't have time to put in the, the scriptures in here, but but Jesus did not want sacrifice. He wanted mercy, all right? Mercy, he wanted mercy, he wanted people to have mercy on other people love your neighbor love god so hopefully that's a little bit of insight on the bible this this particular story and now let's thank you for your contributions it really helps we're trying to we're trying to get some more stuff together to publish and, and to get this word out. So thank you. And all right, so just for a little bit of discussion or whatnot, um, many, uh, okay, we, we received criticisms and saying that, um, well, you're just, you're, dis, you're discrediting Jesus. Okay, that's, and that's just, um, that's just something that that I have heard, um, and I'm sure you know Dr. Lamson and Dr. Rocco heard many many other things. But so, um, and sometimes when I first started 
studying this, um, you know, I, I thought about it, and but I really, you know, I really didn't didn't combine, you know, the Bible with with my personal faith and all that kind of stuff. But um, but but it could, you know, it could have an effect. So um, so I just say here. There's learning about the differences in, in the meaning of these miracles, such as we learned here, uh, such as the wedding in Canaan. Uh, d d does it have any effects on your belief or faith in God, Jesus? 